And we also have the Canadian government that stepped up. They're funding the light rare earth processing, and that too will be a, uh, an exciting program when it starts in Q3 of this year. PDAC 2024, talking to Pat and Yukor, the race to heavy rare earth. Yes, the race to heavy rare earth. Uh, permanent magnets are made with both light and heavy rare earth. Heavy rare earth is dysprosium and terbium, and outside of China, there is literally no processing of heavy rare earth. Whoever gets to that critical heavy rare earth processing is the one that will actually feed the magnet makers outside of China and be in a very, very valuable position. And that's what UCOR is doing with our Rapid SX technology. And uh, for those not familiar, UCOR, based out of Canada, now opening our first key plant in Louisiana, so in the US, safe jurisdiction. Correct, yeah, we have a commercial demo plant. Uh, you see behind me here a picture of it, but a commercial demo plant in Kingston, and that commercial demo plant is proving out the technology, Rapid SX. It's gathering a lot of metric data, and that metric data, with flow sheets and whatnot, will actually then be uh, fed into the engineering for SMC Louisiana. So we're taking a smaller scale in Kingston, and we're amping it up and going bigger scale in Louisiana, Alexandria, right in the middle of the state. Yeah, which I find very, very smart that um, you're not directly at the coast, so kind of 50, 80 miles inland, which shields you from hurricanes, so makes it much more secure site. Yeah, actually more than that. It's probably like 250 miles inland, and uh, it's away from the coast. It's freight from the water, from the mm -hmm. ocean-bound, inbound feedstock. It's a one-day truck trip to our plant in Alexandria, Louisiana, yeah, yeah. and then going back to the um, coast after the truck drops it off. Mm -hmm. uh, or inbound rail. There's all kinds of rail as well, and the rails yep. are, are bringing material in by feedstock from Canada, for example, and uh, in a very good economic area. Very good economic area in the center of Louisiana with lots of support from the state of Louisiana. You, you talked about China and the constraints and the limitations that China is currently dominating this space. For those not familiar with the context, China did ban the export of rare earth processing machine material, so that's clearly showing they want to dominate that space and that the race for heavy rare earth is heating up. Yeah, they banned all the export of any technology that's involved with separating out the critical rare earth oxides used to make the metal, which mm -hmm. then goes into the magnet. So all that technology is now banned, so they're really trying to lock it up tightly. But UCOR's proprietary technology is patent pending, very full in its uh, disclosures, uh, apart from some trade secrets. So it's a really smart place to be with what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely, and you've got uh, good uh, support from the U.S. Uh, Department of Defense. The U.S. Department of Defense has stepped in. They're currently funding a heavy rare earth program with us in Kingston, Ontario. Uh, they're looking to fund us further in Louisiana as we build out our plant. And we also have the Canadian government that stepped up. They're funding the light rare earth processing, and that too will be a, uh, an exciting program when it starts in Q3 of this year. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we've seen that, uh, of course, now uranium kind of taking the spotlight this year. Last year at the PDAC was a lithium. Who knows, maybe rare earth in uh, 2025? I think if you look at the, uh, you know, a bit of a dip in the pricing right now, the inventories are being sold off, but the growth pattern forward for electric vehicles, wind energy, it's all very in line. And, you know, people talk about the pullback on electrification mm -hmm. um, in Europe, where you're from. You know, Mercedes announced that they'll be having half their vehicles electric by 2030 as opposed to 2025. But a lot of their vehicles will actually pivot to plug-in hybrid electrics. And plug-in hybrid electrics actually use rare earth as well. So there's still a really big growth curve ahead and we're anticipating that pricing will mm. rebound. You know what they say, invest when the market's down, make the smart moves when the market's down, and all that separation that's dearly needed in the ex-China world, that's what we're focused on. Yeah, and this discussion about EV numbers going down, we're talking about the percentage in growth. In absolute numbers, EV sales are still going up and looking at China, half of all EVs globally are being sold in China and then we're looking at the magic tipping point, 50% of all new car vehicle registrations as of 25 are supposed to be hybrid or electric. So that's a fact in the largest market in the world. Yeah, very true. In fact, from 2022 to 2023, the global EV market went up 35%. So yes, it, it's up, but it's slowing down a little as we pivot to some plug-in hybrid electric. When you think about it, the infrastructure is needed. By infrastructure, I mean, you need the critical metals and materials to make it happen. You need the plug-in stations and recharging to make it happen. You need the grid. If everyone went electric today, you couldn't power your vehicles. It was being possible. So we need to build that infrastructure up. We need to slow down the pace that's been put out there. Automotive companies are falling in line and we're in a really good spot. And I know you're talking to some automotive companies, but unfortunately, as these are ongoing discussions, you can't disclose anything. It's going to be exciting 2024 for UCOR. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Not just uh, automotive, but consumer electronics and other people that are involved with making permanent magnets that drive so many of our 21st century energy technologies. And uh, you know, we look at the Louisiana plant, which is plant number one for us. 
that's 7,500 tons of throughput, that's 16,000 tons of raw earth concentrate coming in to turn into 7,500 tons of exterior max yttrium, but that actually equates to 3.8 million electric vehicles, or 7,500 Halliad X offshore turbines. It, it's, it's huge, and 7,500 Halliad X offshore wind turbines would power 120 million American homes. There are 145 million American homes all total. Very, so, uh, very much needed. Rare earth today and what we see today, we don't even know what it might look like in three, four years when all these new applications continue to come into play. Yeah, and uh, check out our video, Horses versus Cars. A very interesting uh, story from the 1910 Ford T-Model came in. People totally underestimated what the car would do in terms of total passenger miles traveled. Uh, they thought the car would grab 10% of the horse market. Right. Well, right now we're at ATX, so in the US, Passenger miles traveled by car is ATX of what the horse market was. And we actually believe that uh, the EV tool market is going to be similar, and that's going to be very good for you, Core. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're, you're right on with the, uh, the, the horse analogy. And uh, yeah, one third electric, one third hybrid electric plug in for the near future, some internal combustion engine. That mix is very good in the automotive industry. And lots of rare earth is required to make it happen. And when are we going to see the first batches coming out of Louisiana? Uh, 2025 producing for customers. All the best for the ongoing negotiations. And Thank you. See you latest 2025. Absolutely. Thanks.